Hi, I'm Mel and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're new, please subscribe. I thank each and every one of you who's subscribed so far. If you subscribe today, I thank you too. I really apologize for the way I sound. I'm sick at the moment. Um, I have got like a cold um, and a cough, but there's like random other things that seem to be playing up as well. Anyway, um, today I'm gonna show you how to make a quick and simple easy patchwork uh, cushion um, I think it's a great gift as well as just to have in your home or anything anyway I made one for my grandma years ago did I bring the thing over no I made one for my grandma years ago hang on I'll go get it Um, this is just the cover because I've made her one already. So this is it. It's really light pink and white. I think had the white had pink on too. But I'll show you the back more. The back. Yeah, see it's that colour. <laughs> where I made it ages ago. Her bed is towards the window where the light comes. So it's faded so much. She asked me to make her a new one. So I've made her one already. But I'm going to make her two. So it's easy for her to change wash etc so this is it oh it looks so nice actually i love it so this is it and this is the back i've used the same cushion as before but if you need a cushion you can get them anywhere you can get them from local craft stores so hobby craft do them but i think this was either ebay or amazon but again it was ages ago because it's the same one from that cushion so it would still fit that if she wants to use that which i'll give back to her but it's not much to make and obviously if you go to the likes of Amazon or eBay even get a brand new cushion it's like three four pounds so I think not even that so it's really worth doing even if it's just for yourselves and I've made it like a pillowcase so that she can take it out easy whereas this one's got pop fasteners on um, but this is what I've made her, this one. So I've got the same fabrics to work with. So it is, these are all from Higgs and Higgs. Yeah, Higgs and Higgs. Um, so this is like a mink pink, must not mustard, but like, like a pastel minky pink with the darker pink hearts all over it. And then I did the white with the same sort of pinks and a darker pink on it as well which matched the hearts really well and then i've done the back like that but on the one i'm going to be doing with you now the back's going to be like this so i've just used both fabrics equally so she's got two that she can wash it every week or whenever she changes her bed so this goes on her bed but anyway i'm going to show you now what you need and then we will get onto the sewing machine and make it it's really easy i think this took me like five minutes to make if not that um she asked me to make it for her weeks ago and i've just got round to it um but yeah i want to try and stop talking as much because seriously i'm gonna have lost my voice by the end of this video and i still need to film uh two or three anyway this is it i'll show you what we need to to work with so you need like a fat quarter of each fabric basically so for the front so this square and this square and this square and this square you need obviously probably about half a quarter half a fat quarter but you just get your cushion out the actual cushion so what's inside of this and measure it round the the whole cushion round the fabric and add like your seam allowance my seam allowance is 1.5 centimeters because that's what i learned to sew with so that's what i'm going with so that is what i've done and I have just done a template basically which is in this pink fabric which is a square and then I've cut four of these two in this fabric and two in my uh, roses fabric because grandma loves roses as so I did that and it was a similar sort of colours believe it or not to what this was um, anyway so I've done two in that two in that for the back though you need to pick whatever your backing's going to be you could do it completely different if you want or you could do it the same like i have or match it once to whatever this obviously makes two cushions but you so you'd need four of these and four of the other fabric to make two cushions i'm only making one well i'm making two covers but you know what i mean so you need to then measure your your cushion again over the fabric and then you need to cut 
it long so you need your 1.5 seam allowance on all sides but you also need to cut um longer in length than your cushion so i have got this which is probably like three quarters of the cushion and then i have got this which is half of the cushion because you need that overlap to to get the join in the middle to not like gape open like this one is perfect um so that's what you need you also need a sewing machine and thread to match what you are sewing and i've just gone for white because it is easy especially with the rose fabric i know we're going to be able to see it on this heart fabric now but it's on the back so it won't matter and i think actually it will be fine because it blends in really well with the others so now we're going to head to the sewing machine and stitch this all together and then i'll show you the end product obviously so this might be really random in the way that i am going to put this together but first of all i'm taking the back sides like the bits for the back and i'm just going to do a run a hem along the top edge of both of them um, not together obviously um, separate this is just so it's got a neat edge so I'm taking the edge I am folding it and then folding it again if you need pins use pins I don't but you just pin it in if you did I hope that makes sense so then because you can see it's folding naturally now because it's locked into my sewing machine I'm just going to whiz up there to show you that to make it more clear for you so obviously I've got the other one to go so all I'm doing is taking this edge folding it like so and then folding it again putting it in my sewing machine again if you want to pin it you can pin it and then go along 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 and pin it I don't need to do that because of my level my skill level for sewing is better you can also use things like this which I will use later on because I just want to make sure they secure in and you can go along with your pegs the whole way along but now I'm just going to sew it for up on here Okay, then you can put these to one side because you don't need them until later on. You now need to get your patchwork squares, two of them. So for me, I've gone with one of the heart squares and one of the flowers and you just want to put it together. It should be the same size. I know that this is a bit bigger, this part one, because it was on the salvage, salvage edge. Salvage, oh I can't talk today because of my flipping cold. Anyway, you then want to stitch along this side, do the same with the other, but obviously make sure that the pattern flips over. So now that these two are like that, you want your next lot to be like this. So that's what I'm just saying, just make sure you sew up the right side of the next one because otherwise it just doesn't go right. So we're going to do that now. Again, pin it if you need to. I don't. Okay, this is the next step and this is where it's super important to get it correct. Otherwise it just looks rubbish. So you've got your, your bottom two and your top two or top two and bottom two, whatever you want. So you need to fold these together to sew along this line but you need to get your seams matching. So this is the bottom one, this is the top one. Open the seam up so that this goes separate, like so. Oh, flipped back. This is where if you really need to pin it, pin it, pin it, pin it. And this one, again, look, I'll pin it, or I'll use the A peg just to show you what I mean. That needs to match. So if you are a new to, this is easy for a new sewer as well, just peg it or pin it. Pins, pins work exactly the same as pegs, it's just that I find pegs easier. 
you, you, but you have to take them out. Whereas pins you can sew with a pin in. Just don't go over it. <laughs> right now, stitch along that line. Next of all, you can open that back up. <laughs> like so, and you can see that that is perfectly in the middle and spot on. Then you need to get your backings back, your backings back. This is where I do use a pin or a uh, thingy because uh, it needs to. Right, so on like a pillowcase, oh, it's really raining. On a pillowcase, you know that the longer side of the flappy bit step goes in front so that's why I've put the longer bit down from the top of the pillow to more than the middle and then the bottom bit I am going to so it's probably like an inch up from where the other one finishes and put it back down on the fabric and then just because even me, you can easily mess this up. I just peg the peg, put the peg in place. Obviously, you know I take that out once I'm there, but it just secures it and it makes it easier to not move it about and easier to sew. So I'm putting one on both sides and then we're just gonna stitch the whole way around the cushion. Now your cushion is actually complete, you just need to turn it in the right way. Before you trim anything up, I always suggest putting the cushion in the cushion just to make sure it fits, which I will do. I am just pointing the ends out so it's easy to get in. Oh man, I should have left to go to my mum's before. Oh, never mind. Right. It looks really smart, it needs a bit of an iron, but... <laughs> right, so I've got the cushion out, um, and then all I do is normally, is I always put in the longer side first, like I would a cushion, like a pillow and a pillowcase, you know, on your bed. I believe this goes in my grandma's bedroom like so and then I tuck the other edge up then I make sure that that one sits nicely like that and pull that one over and that is your cushion there is your cushion this is a little bit bigger than the other one I just made for her I need to move that. There it is. The Obviously this is an old cushion inside it, so that's why it's a bit like plumped. But doesn't that look cute? All I'm gonna do now is just go and trim the insides, which I'll show you. Um, and your cushion is done. So all I'm gonna do is cut off like the edges that are longer, and then I'm gonna snip the sides, the corners off into triangles. But just be careful not to cut the actual thread. Look, so um, can you see there's the thread there? So I'm just going to go to just in front of it. You could probably go a little bit more, but... Turn your cushion cover in the right way, so the right way is out, and you can see like now, if you point in, in the corner, they go uh, pointier than they did before, just because you've cut that corner. 
And that's it for today's video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below if you'd make this this cushion. Uh, if so, for you, or who would you make it for, and what colour theme. Uh, I love these colours actually and they would go well with my room especially if I added a little bit of grey in. Obviously you could do all four patches different but it's totally up to you. Anyway I thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!